I'm laying there, all of a sudden I start feeling flutters in my neck and in my chest. My head starts getting really hot. My eyes start feeling like they're gonna pop out. Welcome to our Monday live show called The Upbeat, which we do every Monday night around 9.15. Except tonight, yeah. because this week has not been easy at all. So no. why would this be easy, right? Right, exactly. <laughs> oh man, uh, what what a crazy last seven days it's been. Um, yeah, actually, it's, it's been, been more than seven. It's days. been more than seven days. That's what you're talking about. But we really wanted to jump on live just to kind of give you guys an update. Um, for those of you that are following us, um, you guys saw that I had surgery, and we wanted to kind of give you an update what's going on. Slight complications, but look. I'm here. I'm yeah. sitting. I'm not in that you much feel pain. Better now. I feel I feel better. But um yeah, but before we get started, if you're watching this video live, comment, say hi. Yeah, they're Lim saying hello. They want to know how you're doing. Hi. They're praying for you. And if you're not watching this live, that's okay. Just comment below and let us know where you're watching from. We'd love to see where Team Balmer is in the world. So we'll just get right to the chase, right? Yes. They okay. were yeah, they were they were saying that they were waiting. They're glad that you're home. I'm I'm home. I just I got home a couple hours ago. So Well more than that. You got home this afternoon. Yeah, which it feels like a couple hours ago. Um <laughs> but for those of you that have been following us, I've or have been following us for a long time. Okay. I've had issues with my back for the past like seven years. I was trying to do the whole working out thing one night and I ended up like herniating a disc or a severe bulge in my disc. And it's never been the same ever since. I suffer from a lot of episodes. Every year I'll have like two or three episodes where like I'm pretty much down for the count. I don't know if, you, if anybody has back problems. I'm sure you can relate to this. Comment below. Let me know if you have something similar. But you'll go through episodes where like you'll feel great and you'll be outside playing with the kids or doing your normal thing. And then all of a sudden you'll do something like picking up a sock or... Uh, picking up your kids or taking the garbage out and you'll tweak something in your back and like the next day you can't move and I would do this every year two or three times um, and it was like that for seven years well um, I would say around Thanksgiving time ish yeah and then it really flared up yeah. around Christmas because it was what I was thinking about it we took Ryan and Gavin to Peppa Pig after it was after Christmas um, the day after Christmas because yeah. it was her follow up and you were miserable because you're like, why do you make me sit in You made car? me drive two hours to a Peppa Pig museum. But yeah. anyway, so uh, around Thanksgiving, Sorry. I tweaked it. And it kind of got better. But then I must have did something again. And right around, yeah, Christmas time, I, I really tweaked it. And I was getting the normal symptoms of like, you know, my back just hurts. Just give me a couple days. Maybe a prednisone pack or steroid pack. It kind of gets the inflammation down. Basically, you just got to get that disc or that bulge off of your nerve. And when you get it off your nerve, you're good. It's when it's pushing against that nerve, you get all those symptoms. Well, it started off like that. And then days turned into like weeks of this symptom getting worse and worse and worse. And then it made its way down into my leg. So I, was, I started getting, for the first time in my life, this started turning into like sciatic pain. So I was getting, uh, you know, the nerve burns in your legs. If you guys suffer from, you know, sciatica, it's the worst pain ever. Nerve pain is by far the worst thing ever. And uh, so it made its way into my leg and then it made its way like deep into my butt cheek. I'm going to be honest on this video. It was deep into my left butt cheek. And then the symptoms started getting really, really worse to the point where it then migrated to my undercarriage and then my... <laughs> And mind you, this is how he tells the doctor. This is how I'm telling you guys, like I'm telling the doctor what about my symptoms. Like my undercarriage. Well, like you don't want to. Like I don't balls. know what that. My balls. Like I don't know what to say. <laughs> so like, anyways, it it started making its way uh, to, and then like to my private areas to the point where like they would throb or they would go numb or weigh like a hundred pounds. You'd or say. my boys would feel like they weigh a thousand pounds, or they were like solid rocks, and it got to the point where like I couldn't sit. I couldn't stand, I couldn't lay, I couldn't walk, I couldn't do anything. I couldn't go to the bathroom comfortably. I it was I was in tears. So I looked at Lynn's, I was like, this is not normal. You went to the doctor, they gave you prednisone, they tried that. That didn't Did work. Nothing, which was weird because exactly. that usually does work. So then you went back to your doctor and told them, Listen, this is miserable, like everything is nothing's working yeah. anymore. It's bad. So they were going to admit you to the hospital. Right? Oh, and yeah. so you were waiting for your room. You went to work, right? No, I no, no, I before? came no, I came home and they never oh, called. Right. So then we ended up going live and we did the 
You guys remember our last live video when we were doing the uh, banging on the uh, oh, yeah. pop-up socket things or whatever they're called? Hungry Hungry Hippos? We, no, it? it was Whack-A-Mole. We did Whack-A-Mole. I was supposed to be in the hospital while we were filming that video, but the hospital never called me because they never had an open room. So I was like, okay, I guess they're not going to call us. Let's just go live, hang out, get my mind off of it. Um, and if they call us, great. If not, I'm sure they'll call us in the morning. Well, you so, went to the emergency room because you came home early from work the one day, which yeah, I knew you were Yeah, that was the pain. night that I was to be in, admitted. No, that was the emergency room. I don't know. It's okay. We it don't need all attention to together. Details. No, yeah. but that's where you got your MRI, though. No. So at least you got the MRI in the emergency room, well, which you, you did. You went to the emergency room and they, you didn't think they oh, were going to give right. you the MRI that late. They gave me an MRI and they realized, hey, your shit's bad. That's right. basically what the lady said. Like, your shit is really bad. Follow up with the doctor. That's when I was like, I went to my primary doctor, who's a goofball, and I'm never going to him again. And they, I, they I didn't know how to read the MRI. Yeah, I looked at him. I was like, they told me that my stuff is bad. Look at my MRI. What does it look like? And they're like, oh, we don't know how to read MRIs. So I was like, Jesus, like, they're then, give me, in, then get me in the hospital. So he's like, okay, we'll admit you in the hospital. The hospital never called. I went live. I hung out with you guys. Had a great time. Yes. Felt great. Well, didn't feel great, but my, mentally I was happy. <laughs> yeah. The next morning... Um, the hospital still didn't call, but I, I scheduled an appointment with a doctor that sports a sports medicine doctor. And I, I scheduled this kind of like a week prior to all this happening. And since the hospital didn't call, I was like, Linz, I'm just going to keep this appointment and go see him and see if he could figure this out. So I went and I saw him. However, he was out of network, so he didn't get the images of my MRI. He was just kind of looking at the report that he could see and like my symptoms that I was explaining to him. And I was explaining my symptoms, and he immediately thought that I had that quadra equinica or whatever, where, like, if you guys know, like, in your sacrum is the motherboard of nerves. Like, that's where all of your spinal nerves come down into, like, a motherboard. And if there's any damage to that motherboard, you start, you lose all feeling in the inside of your legs, all your, your you lose all sense of bowel movements, and you basically become immobile. Um... He thought I was very, very close to that, um, which I kind of was. And he immediately said, hey, no, I'm done. Like, you have to, we got to get this kid to surgery. So he comes out of the office and is like kind of yelling at the ladies working the front desk. He's like, I need you guys to call surgeon and tell him like, I got a, I got a guy. He's got to come over right now. So I'm like freaking out. I call Linz. I'm like, uh, Linz. <laughs> Yeah, uh, I'm having emergency. I'm surgery. going to emergency like, surgery. What the? Yeah, I'm what? like, what? You got to We got to go get my MRI images because I got to go to uh, the, the, hospital the surgeon and surgery. I'm like, like right now. What? So then, um, we did. We got your MRI results from the disc yes, from the clinic. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. So we got your MRI results. Right. They ended up calling and saying, "Listen, no, they, we don't. The surgeons are in surgery all day. They can't. There's no. There's no way they can meet with you. Um, but come in in the morning. So they arranged a special appointment. So we went there in the morning. It was that happened on Wednesday. We went there. They ate. Um, I mean, it was nice enough that the doctor. Yeah, I think you missed the point. Yeah, yeah. He well, read the MRI. Right, right. So this is what happened. Rewind. She missed it. Um, so we picked. There's so much that I happened. Mean, I know. <laughs> Let me just explain because I was kind of on a roll there. So, um, he was like, yo, go, I have you lined up for a yes. surgery basically, but in order for you to go to these surgeons, you have to get your MRI images so they can see these so we can get a diagnosis and get you into surgery like right now. So I was like, geez. So I called Lens. I'm like, yo, we got to go back to where I did, where I went to the emergency room and I got to de basically demand my MRI images on a disc and take them with me. So when I go to the surgeon, he can see what the hell's wrong. So I got it. I got the MRI disc. I called the surgeons because I'm like, I guess I'm on the way. Bad news. Both of the surgeons were in surgery all day. So I'm like, great, cool. And she's like, yeah, I'm so sorry. But listen, they want you to come in first thing in the morning. They're going to come in early for you. You got to just come in first thing in the morning. So I'm like, okay, I got my MRI image, images. I got a doctor that's saying that I need immediate surgery. I'm like, I'm, I'm cool. I don't know what I'm doing here. I'm in pain, by the way. I call back that doctor. And I'm like, hey, well, they're in surgery all day, but I do have my images. Is it cool if I just come back up and you can look at these images with me and explain kind of what's going on and maybe you'll get a better idea? And he's a sports medicine doctor. He actually worked with the Indians, the Cleveland Indians. He worked with the Cleveland Cavaliers, did a lot of like big time sports injuries. So this is kind of up his alley. And thankfully, he's, he's, uh, sorry, he's very, um, close. He no, he knows how to read MRI images. Mm -hmm. So I was like, cool, this works. I look at it. <laughs> yeah, I'm coming back. We're gonna pull up these images. You're gonna see them. I'm gonna I'm gonna see them for the first time, and we're gonna figure out what's wrong. 
So we, we go back there. I give him my images. He's like, all right, cool. I'll get these loaded. I'll call you back in a second. So I'm in the waiting room waiting. He comes back and he's like, you want to come look at these? And I'm like, uh, I look at Lynn's. Immediately, I'm thinking like, watch this be nothing. Watch, watch. She's <laughs> probably like, you want to go show these images? I'm going to show you nothing. You know, I'm thinking that. Like, I was kind of almost like getting embarrassed because I'm like, I'm in so much pain. I'm going to be pissed if he's like, this is it. No, we go back and he shows me the images. And I, I don't know if I posted the picture publicly, but he showed me the herniation. He's like, you know, he's like talking about it. He's like, yeah, this is really bad. It's sciatic nerve, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, oh, okay, cool. And I'm like, is this a, is this like a bad one? And he's like, <laughs> in my, in my 30 years of practice, he's like, this is probably the top five worst herniations that I've seen because one, the herniated disc made its way nearly completely cutting off my spinal nerve. And then worst part was it was then sloping down past my sacrum. So it went into my nerve and then down. So that's why he was nervous about the quadra aquinica or whatever it's something like that um because if it starts going down to that sacrum that's where you're going to get those symptoms and he sensed like hey you're because of the numbness and the the pain you're having in your private areas it's probably because of this it's pushing on your s2 nerve your s1 nerve is just it's smashed you got to get into surgery and then he told me like you know it's probably going to be a disectomy or uh uh, uh, they're going to take the whole, Fusion. yeah. Or they're going to take that whole disc out. A disectomy, by the way, is they're just going to cut that part of that disc off. That's into the nerve and kind of get you, bolt. yeah, get, get you flat again. You'll be missing part of your disc, but at least they can cut that piece off and your nerve can breathe and you can get all your sensations back and all that. Or if it's bad, then they'll go in and they'll just remove that whole disc out. And then that's when they unfortunately have to fuse those vertebrae together. So you're looking at a four to six week recovery, somewhat non-invasive surgery to a three to six months, an invasive surgery. That's three to six months. So I'm, I'm a, a total fucking emotional wreck. Sorry. You know, cause like, I didn't know what to do and I'm freaking out because I can't see these surgeons until tomorrow. And I was like, just calm down. Which I couldn't calm them. down. Would I you know. be able to calm down in a situation like that? I know, that? but I, but there, but everything. He's was... telling me I'm about to shit my pants, basically. I know, but you know what? We had somebody look at it, and things were going to be under control, and we were going to get up, and we were going to go the next day, and and that's just I know. what we had control of in that moment. So I we know. went the next day, and we met with the we... surgeon. They looked at everything. Okay, so they got things rolling. And they're like, yeah, you need to you need to have this removed. Yeah, and, that was and Wednesday. That was Wednesday, and then he wanted wanted us to come back Thursday because to actually meet with the surgeon. Because he was in surgery out. again. And yes. I'm like, God, can I just meet the surgeon? Like, yes. I'm, I'm. But he was fairly confident that, yes, this is what they're going to do. But because oh. he was taking ibuprofen, he had to wait and get that out of his system because. That was my pain medication because yes. I was just popping ibuprofen like Skittles. Because so, that's all I could do. Instead of taking ibuprofen, he prescribed him the Percocet. So that's what he started on. So starting that Wednesday, Mr. Chris did Percocet Wednesday, yeah. Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Saturday Sunday, Sunday, and then stopped. Yeah. <laughs> for so, the surgery. so this is where things get interesting, guys. Um, <laughs> I've never done opioids. I've never done any sort of narcotic pain medication ever. He I'm, was so nice to me. <laughs> Yeah. He no, told but, me I was beautiful. I he you. told me no, how but, much he loved me. But but I'll put real, him on purpose that any day. No, but real talk. Um <laughs> I I've always I, I've had back injuries. I've always strayed away from pain meds. I mean, I I'm, I'm just terrified of them. I have a very as you guys know, I'm a very obsessive guy. When I like something, I that's all I think about. I'm tunnel vision and I go for it. This is how I am with my goals, yeah. my life. Everything I, I do. Oh, shit. Could you try again? Sorry, I wasn't talking to you. Sorry, I, I, Siri, I'm talking. Oh, don't know. Siri, no. She doesn't want you to keep talking. Well, so. I'm trying to. <laughs> sorry. People are, oh, well, I'm no. sorry. But anyway, so with just my personality, I'm like, hey, I never want to mess with these. Who knows? I don't want to ever go down that path. Well, it got my pain was so bad that I was like, yo, I, I have to, or I'm, I just can't do it. So he prescribed me Percocet, a very, very high dose of Percocet, to say the least, which is, I'm... I'm sorry. I'm a virgin to this stuff, guys. But you were still in pain. So you but, were taking a high dose of it, but you could still feel it. Like it was oh, helping to dull it, yeah. but you still it was, had it. It was basically just distracting my mind 
away from the pain because it was just making me like, hoo, hoo, hoo. but I was still miserable, you know? So I was taking this every four hours on the dot. Yeah. Um, and I took it, you know, Wednesday through Sunday. Here's the thing, guys. If you know anything about opioid drugs, um, opioid constipation is a real thing. I did not know, and I'm not blaming the doctor. I should have did my own research and people probably know this and I was probably just stupid. And yes, they should have said something. But with strong opioids, they usually prescribe or tell you to get a stool softener or Lex. something to yeah keep your bowels moving because when you're taking these heavy opioids, they clog you up. Yeah. Like bad. They shut down everything. I didn't know that. So from Wednesday through Sunday, I shut down. My my whole digestive system shut down. I was still eating, but nothing was coming out. So when I had surgery on that Monday, because I cut my Percocet cold turkey for surgery. So when I had surgery on Monday, I was full. And back up a second. Back up though, a second. Because you were full and you said you hadn't gone. So our neighbor nurse... Linda, our savior that we call all the time, she prepared a bowel prep for him because she's like, a colon yeah, cleanse. A colon yeah. cleanse. She goes, if you're going into surgery, let's try to get some of this moving before your surgery. Because it's just going to get worse. Yeah. Right. So she tried to help. So she gave him, you know what you take for a colonoscopy? She mixed him up a concoction of that, but only like half. Yeah. Because she didn't want him to be it's like. It's basically high amounts of Miralax with Gatorade. Gatorade. So you yeah. stay hydrated as you're shitting your brains out. So you she, did that. And that worked. I did a full, a bit, yeah, I did the colon cleanse. I chugged this whole thing in like 20 minutes and it was supposed to kick in like a half hour, hour after. Nothing. Not a drop came out of me. My neighbor was like, uh, yeah, that's, that's She not... brought over and She was like dumbfounded. She brought over I was, all kinds of fun guys, stuff. Guys, I bonded with my body in ways that I've never bonded before. I was up in there. I was putting things in places that I, I was squirting things that I never thought I would go up in there. Nothing was coming out. I know this is gross, but hey, we're being real. So I'm just like, I guess I'm going into the surgery full tank. I don't know what else to do. I'm having surgery tomorrow and I'm looking forward to this surgery. I'm not canceling it because I need to get my back yeah. fixed. So I'm already feeling like shit because of my back. Now I'm feeling like shit because of my stomach. I get into, you know, prep for surgery. I tell them, hey, I've been on Percocet since Wednesday. It's now Monday. I have not pooped. They were concerned. They're like, oh, yeah. Um, you know, they're, they're looking around. They're like, you know, we should probably get him an x-ray, maybe kind of help get, maybe flush him out before surgery or give him something prior to surgery. So after surgery, things start really get moving. Well, they, they did it. And I'm not blaming them. I'm not saying anything. I guess the protocol was, I guess, let's just go for the surgery and we'll figure it out later. Now, they did tell me about it afterward because that's what his concern was. He said, now my next concern is surgery went great. Everything is fine. But my next concern was let's get him to poop. So they mentioned to me something about a brown cow. And I was like, all right, I don't know. And then she's like, oh, don't worry. I'll explain it to you. So you were all finished with surgery. By the I, way, surgery went, yes, went great. Right. It went my well. back, yeah, everything went great, smooth. I feel amazing. My incision looks good. So we're beyond it the surgery like, point. Surgery is yes, perfect. Yes, so was, I was updating on the, on the page. Yeah. So you guys saw that. Surgery so was he, great. Yes, I saw him about 5.30 in the afternoon and um, went upstairs and, and he wanted all he wanted to do was eat. So we got him mm -hmm. food. Um, he ate, he peed, he walked, he did everything. That was that the three asked. things that I had to do. Yes. yes. So we found out what the brown cow concoction was, which was warm prune juice and milk of magnesia. And so he which had a looked drink good. That. It looked like hot cocoa when she ate it because like, she oh, warmed it up. I'm oh, like, and you were like so excited that it was going to taste like that. I took a sip of this <laughs> stuff. Oh my God. It tasted like someone shit in a cup and it was like, here, <laughs> drink this and it's going to make you shit. <laughs> That's yeah. what it tasted like. It was pretty gross. So I drank it, you know, thinking like, oh, you know, they're telling, they're basically telling me like this, this is the magic drink. You drink this, you'll be fine. You'll shit. You'll be good. So I drink it. I choke it down. I'm like, okay, I guess I'm going to be fine. She t said this thing's going to push everything out of me. Cool. Well, I went home and if you guys know surgery, you go under anesthesia. I was under full anesthesia with a breathing tube. So I was out, out, not like local anesthesia or anything. I wasn't awake. I was out. <clears throat> so with that, guess what? That shuts down your nervous system even more, which means your body's not going to care about shitting. Plus when you have a, a big surgery, especially on your spine or anything that's nerve, nerve, nervous system related, um, the doctors were telling me that 
that's what your body's going to care about. Your body's going to care about your spine and making sure that your nervous system is good. The last thing that your body's going to care about is pushing out shit. It's just, that's not on your body's agenda right now. So with that being said, I shut down mega because of the anesthesia. Now, At home. now instead of being on Percocet, they put me on Vicodin. Yeah. Which I, I probably shouldn't have been on the Vicodin, but I wasn't in that much. I was in pain, pain, but. So from what they told us, Vicodin is just a step down from Percocet. Which but I don't no, know. I don't know were, anything about drugs, so is it? You were crying in pain because okay, once yeah. the anesthesia. Yeah. We're going to say I was crying, Lance. Once the anesthesia wore off, I was very nervous because he was in so much pain. Like he could barely, it took him a good 20 minutes to get in bed. Yeah, okay. Well, here's what happened. I, they it didn't, was bad. they didn't really give me a pain management plan leaving. He didn't have anything in the hospital, folks. Like, yeah. He was just on the anesthesia. I was just on the anesthesia. Like, so when I came out of surgery, of course I felt good because I was everything was still slowly moving. I didn't feel pain yet. So there was really no pain management or, hey, let's get you started on a cycle of Vicodin. That way when the anesthesia wears off, you're, you caught, you're you. caught up. Well, I didn't know that. So I got home still feeling pretty good. I'm like, yo, I feel good. I, oh. And plus, like, think about it. I went into the surgery not able to walk. I came out of the surgery able to walk. So, like, to me, I was Little like, steps. Baby little, steps. Baby steps. You but couldn't do the stairs to very me, well. <laughs> it was like a sense of euphoria. I was like, Lynn, I'm, yeah. I'm cured. This is amazing. <laughs> you know? I would say what? And then you got, then you got, then when you had actually, when it wore off, you were like, oh my God, yeah. people said I was going to be rollerblading. I'm not rollerblading. I'm like, we, oh my God, we, calm down. Like, you we just had surgery. We went to calm bed. down. We went to bed pretty early that night. And I swear, Right when it was time for me to take that first step up them steps, <laughs> boom, anesthesia was gone. It took me about 20 minutes to walk up our steps to our bedroom. I was cry I was in tears, crying. And I didn't know what to do. Like I was like, oh my God, so what do I do? I call Linda. <laughs> I, I, couldn't, I, I couldn't pick my leg up. <laughs> what do I do? She goes, just give him the Vicodin. She goes, he's in pain. The anesthesia wore off. She's like, just give it to him. And so just like a newborn baby, I set my phone alarm every four hours, <laughs> waking up here, take your pills. <laughs> Um, and then he was on Flexeril too. So he was on a muscle relaxer. Yeah. Every eight hours we did that one. Yeah. So every four hours I'm giving this guy a Vicodin. And then I'm also giving yeah. him his Flexeril. Which I, I, I did end up needing because after the anesthesia wore off, there was a lot of pain. That that first night when you put me in bed. Yeah, it was bad. I was, so I guess was in what? tears crying. Vicodin is still an opioid. And guess what we still didn't know? To take the stool softener and lack I, I drank this brown cow. I thought I was right. gonna, I thought I was good. Nobody yeah. said I had to continue. No, actually, with this. I think you did. I think you did try to do some stuff because Linda told us to do. Yeah, some Linda stuff. was smart. Linda yeah, stepped so in and was did. like, "Hey, you, if you're gonna be taking these drugs, let's get at, you on something." Yes, at that point, yes, she, yes, she was, she was a was savior. Us. Yes. So I did bike it in for I believe two or three more days. And yes, Wednesday, this past Wednesday, okay, was his last time of taking the Vicodin. Yeah, so... So you got real weird. His eyes got but, crazy. I don't like, do well with Vicodin, I if guess. If you guys go back and read some of these posts, I was having to go back and edit the posts because I'm like, oh my God. Like, you can't be on the computer. I could I was trying so bad to, like, update you guys. And I'm <laughs> typing. But, guys, I was on Vicodin, so, like, one eye's looking see. this way, the other eye's looking this way. Shit's just blurry. I'm yes. Just like, and I was like, your eyes look weird. And that Wednesday, he woke up saying that he had his legs hurt so bad and, mm -hmm. like, his calves were swollen. I'm like, what is going on? It's eyes were funny like huge you know what i mean um your blood pressure was high your heart rate was high so we call linda and she comes and evaluates you and i'm like this isn't like linda this isn't normal right she's like well have you sat down have you gone poop so you that night you were trying everything too like yeah. i feel like we were just we were just trying everything to get him to poop that's yeah i did so yeah. it was so that wednesday night we were we were trying that and she goes don't she goes try to do tylenol let's take him off the vicodin and let's do tylenol so that's what we did the rest of wednesday you were just on your flexoril and your tylenol and then um, she was like, you know, because he was pacing. That's all he would do is just pace, 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 pace. Well, pace, one, pace, pace, they pace. tell they tell you not to sit down and lay down so much. Yeah, because... but you were like up so much well, that yeah. you weren't resting at all. Yeah. So she was like, just get a good night of sleep, prop your legs up, see if that helps your legs. So that's what we did. So Thursday you got up, you still had a little bit of pain, you were still swollen. So Linda asked me to do the eye check test with the flashlight on my phone. My, and his I, eyes I, are yeah. not reacting at all to it. Yeah, because, like, of, because okay. of the Vicodin, my, right. my pupils are so dilated that 
I because they were so dilated, I almost lost like not losing my vision, but it was so blurry, I couldn't see anything. Like, see, I, I couldn't read what was on the TV. I couldn't read what was on my phone because I was trying to type stuff to you guys, but I couldn't. Um, I lost my eyes were just. You ever had your eyes dilated? You can't see. Like you're like staring at something, and it's just you can't focus. That's how it was. So she was doing these the test. My eyes were, you know how like you shine a light in your eye and you get a pinhole pupil and then it expands back open? Mine was just like, hello. (laughs) So meanwhile, all this is happening and he's taking his blood pressure and his pulse because of course we have a pulse ox machine here for Ryan and it's his, his blood pressure is high, his heart rate's high. So Wednesday we call the surgeon and we're like, listen, here's the situation. He hasn't gone to the bathroom. His blood pressure is super high. His heart rate is high. He was complaining that he had pain in his calves the other day. They're not as bad, but they are a little bit swollen and painful today. So she said, if you can get him back to the emergency rooms to do that. So we do. They she called ahead, told the emergency room we were coming. So they moved kind of they moved fast. Oh, I was like VIP. I walked right in. So right yes. Yeah, so they took him. They did a chest X-ray and a CAT scan of his chest to make sure he didn't have a pulmonary embolism, which is a blood clot in his lungs. Which, by the way, can scare the shit out of me when they're like, "Yeah, you might have a pulmonary embolism. You might have a clot that left well, he your said leg." That and he goes, he looks at me. He goes, "What is that?" I go, "It's a blood clot." <laughs> yeah. So I'm thinking, great. Every I'm messed up. My blood pressure, my pulse is beating through my neck. I just had a blood clot like break off my day, leg and shoot up to my lung. And like, I know people die from these, so I'm freaking out. I'm like, calm down. We don't have yeah, okay. Easier said than done. They did. The I'm blood. high on Vicodin, and you're telling you're they, telling me this well, shit. Well, you were off, but you know what? But I was still on the yeah. after effect. So yeah. So anyway, they come back and they say, "Listen, your blood. We did your blood work. You don't have a blood clot. It's great, and all your blood work came back beautiful. Boom. But now we're gonna take you back and do it." an x-ray of your belly so they, they did knew that. i was constipated yeah so, they're like, so they do that the doctor comes back he goes basically you're full poop this is your issue yeah so they they sent him home with a magnesium a bottle of magnesium citrate mm-hmm. okay mm-hmm. which is like 99 cents at target for this 10 ounce bottle we probably paid 500 dollars for yeah, it yeah <laughs> but if you guys don't know what mag citrate is just type it on like youtube or type it in a comment it's that thing that people post about where you literally shit your soul out it you drink that stuff and you're on the toilet all day just going to town. So they were like, listen, we, we, we won't make you do it. We usually make you do this here. But since you are you have kind of like a 30-minute drive, we're going to let you take this home and do this at home. So we said, okay. And they're like, we're like, is this what the problem is? And they're like, yes. The issue is that you're just so packed that you have to get it out. Okay. So. Yeah. This one gets all prepped and ready to go Friday. I turn the bathroom into an office. He's got snacks. He's got drinks. He's got the whole thing upstairs ready to go to be pooping all day. And we had a babysitter that was watching Ryan. So I literally locked myself. Nurse Linda's sister. Nurse Linda's sister was watching watching Ryan. So I locked myself upstairs in our bedroom. I need a break. I I didn't even have pants on, guys. I was just. Just letting it go. I was like, dude, I'm gonna drink this. I'm gonna shit my brains out all day. I can be on the computer, get some snacks in me, just keep going, and I'm gonna feel great. This is awesome. So he drinks it. Two hours pass. Nothing. Not a drip. So he gives himself an enema. <laughs> Which I've never done before. <laughs> so I'm 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 sticking that tube up there and I'm squirting some water and I'm holding holding uh, tightly. Yep. And uh nothing. 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 So I Google, I'm like, how fast is this supposed to work? So mag citrate is supposed to work. It takes 30 minutes to three hours. And you're... Yes. So now by the time I get home from work, he still has not gone, which is now maybe like five hours. And so we're asking Nurse Linda, we're like, should he... Because she's texting. Did you go? Did you go? Did you go? Nothing. She's like, that is not normal. So now she's getting nervous that there's a bowel obstruction. His heart rate's still high. His heart, blood pressure's still high. So she's now getting nervous that there's some kind of obstruction that they might not have saw or caught or whatever the case may have been. So we go back to the emergency room. Not the one we went to, but we just went to the local one. Yeah. We went back there. So we're back. Hey, emergency room. Explain the symptoms. Same thing. My pulse is racing. It's not a blood clot. I'm packed. I'm full. And so, she showed him the x-ray. x-ray. So they did another x-ray. Yep. And they showed me this x-ray. And Lots pick, of poop. The whole thing is this pooey. Just black pooey dots. Poop and diarrhea puddles. All the way through. She goes, you are so <laughs> full. Yeah. But good news. I, we don't think there's an obstruction. We think that it's just very, very slow moving and just very, very compacted. So so go home and do mag citrate again. <laughs> try it again. It should work. Yeah. And I'm like, 
all right, maybe it will work. I loosened some stuff up. She said it's not blocked. So I'm, I'm hopeful that if I do it one more time, it'll work. So I wait till the next morning because I don't want to be up all night because I'm kind of hopeful. I'm like, if I do this at seven o'clock at night, I'm probably gonna be up all night. I'm not trying to do that. I'll drink it in the morning. I'll get through the night. So same thing. Crack the top. I Happy just, birthday to me, by the way. This is our, Saturday was my birthday. This is our birthday. I was supposed to go to Michigan for that Save a Heart event. And I told them, Sorry. Like, listen, not smart that I leave. He's still not going. Like he's still having issues. Probably yeah, so should not be two hours yeah. away. So Michigan, we'll, we'll come busy <laughs> another time. Anyways, I crack, yeah. I crack this thing. I down it. I shock on it. Boom. So I'm like, cool. Let's see what happens. Two Guess what? Nothing. <laughs> yeah. Two hours pass. All day. Dry. Three, four hours pass. I may have little bitty, uh, little squirt maybe. And then that's it. And by the way, he is staying hydrated. Like every day he drank over a gallon of water. Yeah. So all, like yeah. he was staying hydrated. Like that wasn't yeah. the issue too. But then. He was eating. Yeah. He was, you know, because that's what they said. Just keep. Keep a normal keep diet. A normal that diet. way it's pushing the rest out. Exactly. You're, you you know. were staying hydrated because your colon grabs water from your body. Yeah. And puts that into the system. So I'm chugging water. I'm drinking mag citrate twice. Okay. Toward the end of the day, the mag citrate starts to kick in. But here's the thing. It's coming out as clear as it was going in. I'm talking, this stuff looked like I was just, I would go a little bit and I'm like, oh cool, I'm gonna get up thinking like maybe I can see something and I'll feel better. No, the toilet was clear. I was just, it was clear water, which then Nurse Linda, it dawned on her that, okay, obviously you are so compacted that whatever your diarrhea is making is just coming in, going around the obstruction and coming right out and not bringing anything with it. So basically what I was doing is is nothing. I was basically just putting my body through more stress. Oh, he tried mineral oil. He tried, he's trying everything. Oh, milk, yeah. The milk of magnesia I was trying again, stool softeners, everything. So, the you know, I get a couple of episodes, nothing. So, um, what a day passes. I'm, we want to do a, the lazy Sunday. I said, yeah, Listen, I go, please, can we have a day? Like, yes. I was so stressed out on Saturday. Yeah. Like, yeah. So I just, yeah, I said, so, can we just be lazy, please? The past two days, I've tried to crap my brains out. Nothing. I'm thinking it's Sunday, which is yesterday. Let's just lay. Let me just try to relax. I don't feel good. I'm so full. I'm freaking out. Let's just, let's just relax. So we're laying, just watching Netflix all day. Felt, In the morning. It yeah. felt amazing to just lay down and just chill. I'm dozing off, by the way. Yeah. At this point. I'm laying there. All of a sudden, I start feeling flutters in my neck and in my chest. My head starts getting really hot. My eyes start feeling like they're going to pop out. I'm like, yo, this is kind of weird. You're sleeping. I'm like, I'm just going to get up and check my my pulse. I've been laying around all day. It's it, There's no way that I'm freaking out. Like, whatever I'm feeling is nothing. I check my pulse. It goes from like 130 to 140 to 150 to 160. My resting heart rate. Just laying, doing nothing at all. I literally said, I, I just had, sur pain. I had surgery on Monday. My heartbeat is 160. Uh, yeah. Chest it, pain, shallow breathing, like yeah. you name it. You so, got it. Yeah. So they walk me, uh, they walk me right to the, my own little private unit and they immediately hook me up to everything. EKG, uh, they're, they're running tests and stuff. They tested me for AFib. They thought my heart jumped up to AFib and I'm just, isn't AFib like when you're just like, in an uncontrollable fast beat. It's just, yeah, it's just, you got to get your heart back. Yeah. So that's, it's your electrical system. Yeah. When you're at that point, yeah, they, they got to either shock you back into your, that's not good. They got to get you back. They got to get you out of it. Yeah. When you're an AFib, that's not good. They thought I was an AFib. That's how bad this was. So then things started to kind of calm down and my rate was kind of going like this. So like, okay, he's not an AFib, but he is not doing, he's not doing good. So he had what they would call sinus tachycardia. But like, so he's in sinus major. rhythm, right? You were in sinus rhythm, which is good, but tachycardia means a very high, um, quick heart rate. Yes. And so they, they put me in a bed. They're jamming me with needles because they're, they want to do every blood test known to man. They wanted to test, my thyroid. They wanted to test blood cultures to see if I had a blood uh, an infection in my blood. They wanted to test my heart enzymes. They wanted to see if this is any at all related to my blood system or to my cardiovascular system. Am my what's going on? So they're doing all these tests. Um, Sorry. Bless you. We've been in a hospital <laughs> for a long time. Oh my God! If I I, I hear all these people coming down with the, oh sorry sir you have the flu. Oh yeah. my God! Oh my yeah. God! If I get bad. sick, I'm gonna freak out. Um, but anyway, so they're doing all these tests, right? Um, 
and while I'm sitting in the bed, my think my heartbeat is going from it go. I'm going this is in t in the same time that I was doing it. Is this is what I was doing? 130, 80, 124, 74. Like my heart was doing that. It was really yeah, weird. Very weird. So like, and when I felt it go up to like 140 to 120 you to 150, I would feel do, 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 and I would feel this in my neck and I'd be like, oh my God, it's high again. It's high, it's high. So then I'm getting anxiety. So on top of it, I'm stressed because of this. I'm stressed because of my, my newly, I just had back surgery, guys. I'm stressed about that. I'm then, now I'm stressed about the mental effect that it's having on me. I'm, sh I'm having a panic attack. Um, so they, they finally get me into my room and they're, they're feeling me out. They do another x-ray or they, they, since I just had a CT scan on my lungs that there was no blood clot, they were hoping like, okay, he's probably still good on that. Let's not do a CT scan. So they did another x-ray again on my abdomen, my stools. They're like, yo, okay, maybe something really is going on here. Did another x-ray, comes back. I'm still jam packed, guys. Like it's not yeah, going all, anywhere. All of his blood work came back perfect. She's like, your blood, all of your levels look great. Your white blood cell count, everything is great. The only thing that they could find that was a little bit high was his blood sugar level, and it was only at 103, which isn't even it was, that yeah, high. It was, it was like three but points. But they over. were just something. Everything was great. So yeah. obviously the cultures, they'll take a couple of. So days, then, but... the, so then hearing doctors say, yeah, I don't know what's going on. <laughs> hearing a doctor say that, like, what the heck? Yeah. And there I am panicking again, uh, panicking again. So now my heart's racing through the roof. Yeah. They have yet to like give me any sort of medication to get my, get my stuff under control. I think they just wanted to watch me to see like what. Yeah, they were just monitoring yeah. to see how you, yeah, to see the pattern. Cause it was just so up yeah, and down. So they, I don't think they wanted to put me on anything so they could, yeah. So they can monitor it. So anyways, they do an x-ray of my, my bowels. Again, I'm jam packed. So they finally, I, I, my levels I want to say stabilize, but they didn't stabilize, but they were enough that they could finally say, hey, we're going to admit you. We're going to put you in the observation unit and we're just going to keep an eye on you. We're going to put you up to a 24 hour heart rate monitor. We're going to keep an eye on everything and see what's going on. I get up to the room um, and I talk to the physician assistant that's going to be watching me. And she says, OK, here's the thing. Everything, everything and anything about your heart has come back great. I did an echo and I did a Holter monitor this past summer in May In May, because of Ryan. I volunteered to be the guinea pig and see if anything was related to my heart, maybe that is related to her. Well, when I did the Holter monitor, and I did the echo. Everything was basically normal. Nothing was, you know, there's no red flags, nothing. So they were going off of that and they're like, hey, you know, your heart's fine. You, we have right here on a piece of paper showing us what your resting heart rate should be. 72 beats per minute is what my average is. My blood pressure is usually in the 120 over 80 range. I'm pretty, pretty textbook, thankfully. Um, so they know that like nothing's really wrong cardiovascularly. All my stuff's coming back. So she says, hey, you know what's causing this issue? It's your bowels. And I'm like, thank you. God. It just took three uh, ER trips for somebody to finally say, yes, it's the shit in you that's causing this issue. I mean, they've all said, they all said it was But they that. finally, like, took it serious, like, this is really messing with your health. Right, exactly. That's the thing. It was, it was more so just go home and take this. Just go home and try this again. But, like, it was getting to the point where that's dangerous because you, when you get your blood pressure up that high and your heart rate's that high, that causes other things to happen, like stroke. Yeah. Which stroke runs in his family. Oh, yeah. Like his I, mom had a stroke before she was 45 years old, like I, a big stroke. Yes. Yeah, so I, I... From stress. Odds are not in my favor when it comes to stress and stuff. So exactly. this is going on in my head. Exactly. So that's why it was nice that, like, okay, they finally listened and, and admitted you. And then what did they do? They gave you a pill. They gave me a pill that Being was... an, an M. I yes, but it's an opioid reversing pill. And it... it it triggers the mind and the body to reverse any effect that the opioids have had on the body, such as constipation. Yeah. So you take this pill and it somehow magically gets your body to think, oh, okay, I'll let you shit now a little bit. So I took this pill. They had me hooked up to more. I was on a drip all night. Just saline. I, yeah, I took that pill. I took uh, a couple stool softeners because they're like, you know, if this starts coming out, this might hurt. So we're going to try to soften as much as we can. So I'm like, okay. So I took this pill. And they're watching my heart rate, which is still high, but they're like, hey, just, just relax. Like she told him he would probably have a blowout. Yeah. In bed. That's what she said. She's like, 
And th- it was like, what, nine o'clock when I finally like got comfortable in my room because you already left. I left. So it was probably like eight, nine o'clock. And she's giving me this pill saying that basically I'm going to have a blowout. I'm going to shit my pants all night and it's going to be a long night. So I'm like, you know what? I don't care. I won't sleep. Uh, I won't sleep a blink if I feel better. I will stay up all night and shit all night. I do not care. So I took this pill. I was pacing, walking, chilling, hanging out in the room until about 2.30 in the morning, as long as I could stay up, thinking like, I can't fall asleep because what if this pill kicks in? One, I don't want to shit the bed. And two, I want to make sure that if I feel something, I go. Like, I don't want to sleep through this moment, you know, and wake up and be like miserable again. So I'm panicking. And then I get a phone call, Liz, I need you to bring me up some new clothes. Yeah. So I didn't want to do that. So I just stayed awake and I was watching TV. Like, when is this thing going to kick in? This lady said, I'm going to have a blowout. Where's this at? You know, I fell asleep at two. I probably woke up around 3.30 because they did vitals. And like right after vitals, I kind of stayed awake for a minute. And I felt a sensation. I went in the bathroom. And I finally went a little bit. Yay! <laughs> Yay! And after that, I kind of I had a couple more little episodes where I finally started going. My body was finally letting me release some of the bowels. Which, guys, I haven't took a... I have not, took it, I have not taken a, a shit in over two weeks. Yeah. Two weeks! I'm a guy who goes every day. Clockwork. I have not gone in, over, in about two weeks' time. So that first time of it coming out was the biggest sense of emotional and mental release because like I finally saw like wow my body can do this thank god but it still wasn't enough wasn't enough no but it got some out of me and when that happened my vitals dropped down a little bit so like okay I think we're I think we're on to something. This I think now now he could start believing that his vitals were related to yes. this. Yes. And the, and the doctor too. I wasn't I was not 100% convinced. I wasn't either. I that it was the... both related. I'm like, why is it so high? Like, really it can do that? Yeah. I mean, okay, let's just try it and see right. and then I don't even think yeah. the doctors were 100% sure, but they were telling me they were. But okay. when it started happening, they were like, "Oh. Oh, good." Yeah. <laughs> it was like one of those. So then um she I I can't remember. She gave me another pill. I don't remember if it was a stool softener or if it was a laxative. I can't remember. But I remember her talking about a laxative. It could have been an oral laxative or something. But she, I took another pill. And then I started having a couple more episodes, right? And again, my blood pressure and my pulse started going back down even more. So then she mixed you up. So then in the morning... This earlier today. Yeah, I, I fell asleep maybe for like another hour and I got till the morning vital rounds. And then I was up at like 5 a.m. But in the morning, she did the a full colon cleanse on me. And if you guys know what that is. Like when you prepare for a colonoscopy. They they want you to have a big blowout before they start feeling up in you. So they they did that with me. And what, the, what it is is it's like 62 ounces of Gatorade or some sort of juice to keep you hydrated. And they dump a crap load of Miralax in there. To basically give you instant diarrhea or, or an instant bowel movements. Light and go or something like that. Yeah, so she came back in with like, you know, a like, the, you know, those hospital of... cup mug things that have the straw. She came in with like four or five of these things and she's like, start drinking. So I'm just pounding these things back to back to back to back. And finally it hits me and I go in that bathroom and it's just like, I have like one big rush and it, it clears me out pretty good. Like there's a, I don't mean to be gross, but there's a mix of, I, I, I saw, yeah, like I think a bird flew out of me <laughs> and uh, I start feeling really good because obviously that's not just bowels, but like that's yeah, gas. Yeah, politely. I know, but like. No, no, oh, sorry. no, that's what that was. But like, think about it. it, like the gas and the bacteria and just everything that's in you for two weeks time is finally starting to come out. And when that started happening, my pulse was back down where it kind of should. It was still, I'm still a little elevated here and there because I'm not fully cleared out yet. But they got enough out of me that they think that that compacted part that was in me either made its way completely out or has broken up enough to where it can start passing on its own, which brought my blood pressure down, brought my pulse down. And because of that, I was able to come home today. And the doctor said, when I talked to her, she was like, hey, this is what we think happened. We think it was a combination between the stress of, let's not forget, you just had back surgery on Monday. That's stress to the body. 
And um, yeah, I had opioid drugs. Could there have been some sort of withdrawal stress maybe? I've never had opioids. I was on heavy drugs for a week. There could have been slight withdrawal symptoms on top of that that could cause stress. She said, I told her that she asked me about uh, if I was ever under anesthesia, how I've acted out of surgery before. And I said, I've never had surgery. I've had my tonsils taken out so long ago, but I've never had a big boy surgery where I've been put under, under that type of anesthesia. That's huge stress to your system. And I'm full of poop. That's more stress. And guess what? Now she said, we think you may have had an anxiety or a panic attack, which is completely understandable when your pulse is beating 160 in your neck and you're laying down on the couch and you're being told that one, you might have a blood clot. Two, we don't know what's happening. Three, so I had an, like a legit panic attack, which triggered my heart to which stay Which you've never high. had before. So Which I, mean, I know people are like, oh my God, I'm having an anxiety attack. I'm not play, downplaying these. I legit had... Like a, now you understand what, they are going, what they've gone yes, through. A diagnosed anxiety attack, which made all that stress elevated even more. And when it, things started to kind of normalize, my body and my mind were kind of coming down to ease. Right. So now, you're, you still have to go. You yeah. still got to do more stuff because it has not all right. come out am I <laughs> Yes. Am I perfectly normal right now? No. My blood pressure is low and it it's kind of normal, but it does kind of go back up and my pulse kind of goes up and down a little bit more still. But they told me that, hey... Give it time. Keep doing keep going. Yeah, keep doing Miralax for maybe two or three more days to kind of keep this going down. And hopefully we got it all out that you can kind of regulate yourself and you'll be good. So that has been my week. A not so invasive back surgery has turned into a week from hell. Three ER visits and an overnight stay. And to poop. To, to, to take a shit. Yeah. Can we just think about that I for know. a minute? A normal bodily function so my was robbed will be, from me for two weeks. My turn will be next week when I go in the nut house. Now, this is what <laughs> this is what made me feel really bad. Guys, Lindsay's birthday, <laughs> Lindsay's birthday was on Saturday. That was in, like, the worst part of all of this. So it's okay. So, we, we did not get to celebrate Lindsay's birthday. It's okay. But I told her, we're going to take a rain check. Totally okay. And we will celebrate your birthday when my body is normal. Totally okay. So wasn't um, a big bother to me, honestly. Like I went, I had, cause I did, I made the decision not to go to Michigan. Um, and then the girls were like, well, let's at least go out to dinner then. So I went to dinner, which was not a pleasant dinner either. So I was like, wow, you really can't win. <laughs> like everything went wrong at it's, dinner. Everybody's yeah, meals were yeah. screwed up. They were, it was just, we waited for, it was whatever. It's been, I was like, I just want to go home and sleep. <laughs> it's yeah. It's been the week from hell, which was supposed I'm supposed to be happy and recovering right now, which hopefully I think I can make that step in that direction now. Which is kind of weird because, like, if you think about it, I said I had back surgery. I should be kind of, like, recovering from that. Like, I have yet right. to, like, mentally recover from my back surgery. I forgot, like, that I, yeah. I forgot that I had back surgery. She's like, hey, Chris, how's your back? I'm like... Oh shit! Yeah. Everybody like, oh, yeah, uh, talking about that, and they're like, "Oh yeah, by the way, how how, do you, how does your back feel?" I yeah. forgot because of everything else that's been going on. That yeah. Now I would be shocked if like your blood cultures come back and they're like, "Yeah, you have an infection in your blood." Now I'd be shocked. Oh my god! That's I would not, be shocked. I know just, it wouldn't be great. because your white blood cell count was fine, but because and that would show infection yeah, too. Yeah. But um, like yeah. But um, as far as the surgery. Everything went great. Yeah. Um, I still have a little pain in my sciatic nerve in my butt, but I'm hoping that it's just the residual pain of that nerve kind of, that nerve was compressed. So, you know, it's got to breathe again. It's going to heal. And that nerve's probably still a little compressed. So when I stretch my leg too much, I tug on that nerve and that nerve stretches and it's not ready to stretch yet. So I got to just be easy. He needs to, yes. And then the other part is. Which I haven't taken it easy yet. I've exactly. been so freaking so high strung. So tell him, folks. Please tell him right now, all of you. I want everybody commenting, saying, Chris, you are not a burden. I want you all to type that. I'm going to watch it. Come through here. Please type, Chris, you are not a burden. 
I, I like the other night I, I got it. I'm like, okay, we're all going to bed because he can't do the kids. So I have to put Ryan to bed now, which she's been a good girl and going to sleep for me at least. Um, and then Mr. Gavin, I tell him to go upstairs to his room and fall asleep. But by the time I look, he's asleep on the couch. So I got to lug his butt up the steps. So the other night I was like, no, I was so tired. I'm like, we're all going to bed. <laughs> So it was like nine o'clock. I'm standing there brushing my teeth. He's done. And he starts going downstairs. I go, where are you going? We're all up here. He's going downstairs to get an ice pack. He goes, you were brushing your teeth. I didn't want to ask you. I go, you need to ask me for these things. You need to tell me that you're going to get dressed and I can put help you put your pants on. You need to help me do these things. You're not allowed to bend, lift, or twist. Like you're not allowed to do it. So just tell me and I will help you because I can't help you if I don't know what you want. So you have to voice that. See, they're all saying that you're I, not a burden. I know. And I he's know. trying to push it because he feels bad, like he is. And I because think like it's, this it's week okay. has been so crazy, and like having you have to sit like in the e like I get it. You're my wife, and I understand. But like, I said having you have to for sit for better or think, worse, in sickness and health till death. Whether I'm part. a brand new Ferrari or a beat up Buick, you're with me, baby. But like having you have to miss your birthday or like have it to sit I know but fine. have to sit in the emergency room three different times and then sit in the hospital it's but like, that's what you do I sat I know, there for Ryan but, I'm her mom that's what I do I know I, but I like, do it for Gavin if he something happened to him I would do it for him I know but if, if there are guys it. on this I don't guys are you watching do we have any guys watching this but like I don't know like you want to be the strong one. Like, you want to be the, I don't know. Like, I never want to be the burden. Thank you like, all for telling him this. Okay, well. But, I'm going to make him read all of the comments. <laughs> you get what I'm saying. And like, Oh, no, yeah. Yeah, and it's like an emotional thing because, like, I always put Ryan to bed. Right, I always yeah. carry Gavin up to bed every night. This is how it's always been since Ryan's been born. I put her to bed every night. They have their thing. I haven't been able to do that because of my back. So, like, yeah, there's an emotional distress there that kind of yeah. makes me feel bad. Yeah. So then I'm like, I feel bad because then you have to put her to bed, which I know you, I'm not saying like you shouldn't or you shouldn't want to, but it's my thing. So like having you do it, I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> I feel like. I'm taking it from you. Yeah. And I kind of feel like, like, I don't know. I, don't know. I get a, it. That's your a, thing with her. I know yeah, you guys just, have it. I know it's special, but it's okay. So anyways, guys, that has been my week. How does that sound for a, for a fun? How is that storytelling? <laughs> Yeah. So thank you for being like super patient and understanding. Yes. With us. And people that did order things, thank you for being super patient. I They're have coming. a last little bit that's going to go out to the mail tomorrow and then everything's coming in. Yeah. So I've been just a little behind. So yeah. give me and some videos, grace we're, we're going to be kicking back up with videos here. Yes. It's very soon. Promise. If not this week, then definitely next week we'll be getting into videos. Yes. But there was, there's still going to be a video posting this week. I'll see what we're going to do. Yeah, we might do one. I, it depends on how he is. Let's, yeah. let's give him some time to poop. I might, yeah, <laughs> I might need at least one day tomorrow to finally like. Collect Our my video thoughts. this week is Chris is gonna go get a colonic. <laughs> yeah, dude, I want one. Now I've learned never in my guys, life that I hear, would ever think you'd say you want a colonic. In, in the past week, I've learned so much about poop and my body and bowels and, and bowels how works, and yeah. how they work and where they go and what touches what and what it feels like to touch what. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, oh, I don't even want to get involved in that. Like, that's the talk about a loss of dignity is when a, when the nurse says, roll over and pull your pants down. Yeah, especially when I'm sitting there in the room with him. Like I made eye contact because I didn't know what to do. I know. You're like, hey, Lynn, how's it going? And, and <laughs> why is it always the nurses that are like your age or like younger? And good, you know, pretty. Yeah. And like the, yeah, the more attractive nurses. Why can't it be like the, the 76 year old volunteer Careful. nurse? That, Watch it. Well, I'm nurse. just saying like. Watch I would it. be more comfortable with like the one that's more of a mother figure to me or a grandmother figure than the somebody that's something somebody that's that my just age. Came out of would you want some, like picture your 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 friend, your girlfriend or your boyfriend's putting their finger in your butt? You know, like not like your partner, but like a friend of yours. That's what. But it felt I think like. you're at the point to have a neighbor, our Linda, Linda do it. Oh, by that by neighbor. that third time in the morning in the emergency room when that we had a younger nurse or a younger doctor. Um, she walked in. She's like, "Roll over and do the thing." I was like, "All right, <laughs> go go for it." I'm not. I didn't even shower today. Ew. <laughs> but like, nice. why is it always that? Why why is it always? I think they should have a designated finger putter up the butter, and it <laughs> it should be like some like butch dude that's like a beer drinking fifty two year old guy. You know what I mean? Like, I feel they I got bigger hands though. So oh, you true, might want true. A woman. Never mind. Yes, you're right. 
Yeah. Well, if I'm paying that much, I want the full effect. You know what okay, I mean? I Put your so. fist up there if I'm paying you this much. I guess so. <laughs> but yeah, so it's just been crazy, guys. Yeah. Super crazy. <sighs> that's 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 where we're at. Yeah. I got some really good storytelling for next week, though. I do have a good topic for next week. You're going to like it. Um, well, you, we're all yeah. going to like it. Yeah, we're all going to like it. Uh, but, yeah. But with that being said, I think it's time for us to go relax. Yeah, go to sleep. And go to sleep. I, yeah. And we hopefully could. I can have my first night of decent sleep. And hopefully Ryan stays in her bed. And hopefully Ryan stays in her we crib. Took her crib off. And, and doesn't come wake us up at 3 in the morning. Mommy, where are you? Well, I'm sleeping in bed, sweetheart. Uh, yeah. It's 3 in the morning. Maybe you should try it. <laughs> I mean, you need to go back in your bed and sleep. Uh, but anyways, guys, thank you so much for supporting us through our good times and our bad times. And our gross times. And I'm glad that I'm able to share my grossness to hundreds maybe of thousands of people on the internet. And if you're going to take opioids, make sure you take a stool softener and laxative with them. Yes. And guys, PSA. If, if you have to poop, go poop. Don't hold it because it could it could literally kill you. He goes, I'm never going to hold my poop or farts ever again. I'm like, oh, great. Yeah. Because like I, I was, I'm not saying I almost died, but I was not on a good path. So yeah. if I got to fart in public, I'm ripping ass. And you should too. We should all just rip, rip ass. Okay. <laughs> But anyway, anyways, guys, we love you so much. There will be a video posting on Wednesday. We'll figure it out. We'll get some content up for you guys to watch and laugh. Um, until then, we'll see you Wednesday, and we'll see you on next Monday. Yeah. Um, yeah, so we love you guys. Thank you again for all your love and support. And Good night. Good night.